Hi everybody and welcome to Penfinity. My name is Roslevani2 and today I'm going to talk about the, um, the principal shader because a lot of people ask me why I don't use it on a daily basis for the, for the creation of my shader library. Uh, it's not that I don't use it. So I, I use it from time to time, especially for, uh, for basic material like, uh, uh uh, plastic and stuff like that. But, uh, to me, as I said previously, the principal uh, shader doesn't give me all the time the, the flexibility I need to create, uh, uh, some specific type of shader. Does that mean you cannot, uh, reproduce uh, what I showed you previously? Absolutely not. You can, you can get close to it. It's just, it really depends of, of your uh, what you want to to achieve uh, uh, with with your sh uh, shading and texturing, if you're a guy um, or girl and your goal is just to to design stuff and have a, a library of shader to just drag and drop and, and render your stuff, you don't need to go in depth with that. Or you can use the principal shader to create some stuff quickly. After that, if your goal is to create a high level of print illustration or stuff like that. You will have uh, at some point to go in depth in the in the creation process of of advanced shader, and uh, by the way, um, you will be able to use the principal shader effectively if previously you uh, do an in depth research of how material behave and how to recreate them with what you have in Blender. Uh, uh, it will be much easier to, to reverse engineer with the, with the principal shader. So, uh, here I want to show you, I'm not gonna, uh, recreate, recreate it with the principal. I, I just will show you the, the node setup. So the, what you see here is the, uh, the shader I create in the previous lesson. And here it is, uh, the one with the principal shader. So as you can see, they are, pretty close except some some stuff i have some issue with the tints on the uh, uh with the principal but i can tweak that a, a lot more to to get as close as possible but you can uh here is the principal and here is the node setup i did uh, previously you see so you can have uh, really good result. You can, uh, uh, for example, if I have a job now, if, if someone, uh, contact me to, uh, uh, to create a job with, uh, 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 gold material or whatever, and the deadline is, is really tight. I'm going to go straight to the, uh, unless I already build the shader, I, I will go straight to the, to the principal to create some stuff. I will heavily tweak in post-production after. So, it really depends on of your goal and what you want to understand with with uh, with the shader. So that will determine um, what you want, how far you want to go in this uh, in in this uh, in this process. So let me show you the setup with the principles. So with the principal shader, I have to do all the color mix uh, mix before plugging it into the base color. So the, the principal setup is, is not complicated. So I, I switch it to full, full metallic because gold is full metal. Uh, the specular, specular tint, roughness and clear coat. And, uh, yeah, that's it. And here I use the same, uh, mix as I showed in the, in the first, in, in the previous lesson with the gold. And uh, here I had another uh, UN saturation to um, to desaturate a little bit uh, the mix I already created here, and I use for the the, the second uh, glossy shader I showed you in the previous lesson. I use a UN saturation to plug it into the shader. Uh, here instead, you will plug this into a mix, and after that, use another U saturation to have the green tints you will mix with the pointiness and had it here to have the, the entire color of the shader and you would plug it into the base color 
uh, combined with the, the mix I have here. So you, you can tweak that on and on. Let me do a full screen so you can screen capture this if you need to. So let me pause that for a second. And yeah, you you can create a really good base uh, with the with the principle. You can after that tweak in post production. So as I said, it really depends of how far you want to go in this creation process. So the principle shader is really good to create the basic material to uh, import some stuff from Substance Painter if you have it in your in your in your pipeline. So it is it it is a really really good shader uh, for that type of stuff you can create a whole range of, of material with that so after that me my goal is to uh, create as much procedural as i can because i don't want the uv and texture part i don't want that in my workflow i said that previously i don't want to uv texture you will never see me do that uh, in my video so no at least not for now and and i hope uh, uh, um, in, in, in the next maybe two two years uh, we will have uh, a system that allows us to just get rid of that but you will never see me do uv texture on my on my project so that's why i decided to go fully procedural because it gives me the flexibility to get rid of that part and procedural texturing it is not that hard to uh, to replicate you just have to understand the basic principle about what you see and uh, that's why I recommend in a previous lesson digital texturing because this book will really teach you how to see and how to analyze and uh, how to replicate efficiently in a 3D package. Of course, you have some texture like fig, imp uh, fig imprints and stuff like that. I, I just can't replicate procedurally, so I will use texture for that, but I don't need to UV texture uh, 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 for that anyway. So. So yeah, my goal is to create a, a basics of maybe 10 to 20 procedural uh, texture to an, uh, uh, with the few I already have right now, I have five of them. I can create a whole bunch of uh, real, crazy realistic material as I showed you in the, in the previous video. So I let you imagine with the, with the library of, of 20, uh, of, of 20 procedural combined with some, some external texture, you will have everything you need to create whatever you want. Remember, the goal is to, uh, give, give, uh, to people the, the feeling that it's real. It's not, uh, it's not to replicate exactly all the dots and tiny dots from there to, no, it's not the goal. So uh, uh, you are not a copy machine. You have to uh, be able to analyze what you see and uh, how to uh, re um, create, create it efficiently in your 3D package, regardless of, of what you're using. So, and remember the, the, whatever you use principle or custom made or, or whatever, it's not, this stuff will do nothing for you if you don't understand uh, uh, your basics. And that's really important. Keep that in mind. You can have the most amazing realistic shader in the world. If you don't know, for example, how to light it, you're going to waste your time. So take the time to learn the basics about light, about materials, about, yeah, uh, about everything around creating shaders. And trust me, it will make your life, first, it will make your life much more easier and you will have no problem to switch from a cycle to redshift to i don't know random and or whatever because it's not about the render engine the render engine is not it's just a tool so you need uh, a really good basics the reason uh why i was able to to know exactly what i need to do to use the the principal shader to to get as close as possible uh from my previous rendering or vice versa it's because i take the time to study the the basics before so a, a, a beginner will not be able to, to, uh, to create, to analyze what it needs to do to create that kind of stuff as, uh, uh that fast. So keep that in mind. So yeah, it's just the, uh, this point I, I want to make. So, um, of course you can use the, the principal shader to create a lot of stuff, but, uh, at least for me, for now, uh, for certain type of shader, it will not do the job as I wanted. So, uh, my goal is to create design, uh, with, the highest realism possible and for that you need you need much more 
So yeah, I hope uh, uh, it was uh, this one was informative. So if you have any question, as always, don't hesitate to ask ask me. So let me just put it full screen for you to screenshot again. So as you can see, it's nothing nothing complicated. So just tweak this value and just plug that that way. And uh, yeah. If you have any question, don't hesitate. And until the next video, guys, I wish you a great day and see you soon, everybody.